Hi, my name is Björn, and in this video we're going to create an IK solver using Bifrost in Maya. As you can see here in my outliner, I already have something set up. I have three joints, A, B and C. I also have a null named AIM. And finally, I have a start and end point for my IK solver, along with an up object. We'll use that later. First, let's go to Windows and select the Bifrost Graph Editor and create a new graph. In order to do this, we're going to be solving the angles of our triangle that these three joints make up. So, to get started, we need to get the point position of both the start and end point. For that, we'll use the node called Matrix to Scale, Rotation and Translation Values or Matrix to SRT. I'll rename them so we can keep track of which is which, and I'll connect it up to our input node. On the input node itself, I'm going to rename the inputs as well. Start and end. If we graph our Bifrost graph in the node editor, we can see that the two inputs we created are now there. So let's connect the world matrix of our endpoint up to our input end of the Bifrost graph node. And let's do the same for the start point, the world matrix connecting up to the input start. Now let's calculate the magnitude of our vector from start point to end point. That's the distance between the start and the end point. First we'll subtract the start and the end point positions from each other to get the vector. Next we'll use the power node to set the output values of the subtract node to the power of 2, also known as to the second power or to the values squared. Let's set the exponent to 2. Next we're going to need the individual values of the vector, so we'll use the node vector3 to scalar. We can now use the add node to add together the x, y and z values. Now all we need to do to find the magnitude of our vector is to find the square root of this result. For this I'll use a square root node. Let's give this a backdrop so we can see what's what and let's rename it to length of side C. So in our triangle here we have three sides, A, B and C, and C is the longest distance, that's the distance between our start and end point, as visualized here. Then each corner is the opposite of that edge. So you'll see the C angle, or C corner, is opposite of the C edge, or C side. Anyway, that's just to say that the side we're calculating the length of is the distance from our start point to the end point. Okay, let's check the length of each side. Here's side A, here's side B, and the distance or length of side C is supposed to be 10. Now if we clean up the node editor and graph our Bifrost graph here, we can test if this output is actually correct. So I'll create a null here and I'll connect the output of our Bifrost graph up to the translate x value of this null. We can see that the result is 10, so the calculation is correct. Now, since we know that our sides A and B are not going to change, since this is going to be an IK arm or leg, then we can just grab those values and input them into a value node. At least for this setup, we're just going to hard code those two sides. There's no need for us to calculate them. Next, we want to calculate the angle of small c, so the corner opposite of the side c. To do that, we need to set the magnitude of each vector to the power of 2. Then we'll add together the result of side A and B and subtract that from the result of side C. Now 
We then need to divide this with another value. We'll use a multiply node to multiply together side A and side B and 2. This value is what we'll divide with the previous value. We'll use a divide node to combine the result of our multiply node with the subtract node. We then need to connect this value up to an a cos node, a cosine. Once that's done, we can connect it up to a radiant to degrees node and connect that to our output. Let me just get rid of this other output I created earlier. I'll rename it to C, because that's the corner that I'm bending. No. Let's name it B, that's actually the joint we're manipulating. So. Now if I parent my C joint under the B joint and move the end point of my setup, you can see that we are on the right track. Now I'll select all of my triangle solve nodes here and press Command G or Control G to create a new compound. I can rename this Solve B because I'm solving the rotation of the B joint. You can also rename it Solve C, because that's the actual corner we're solving. I'm also going to rename the base input here to Solve, because that's the one we are actually solving. We're solving the corner C based on the magnitude of the side C, which we then pipe into our B joint. So, yeah. Just do as I do and don't listen to what I say. I'll make a copy of this compound and rename it Solve A, because we want to solve the angle that is our A joint, which is also the B corner. In order to solve the A joint rotation, we need to switch around the inputs. So, I'll connect the side A magnitude into the to solve input of our Solve A node, and I'll connect the square root node here, the magnitude of the C side, into the one that was previously connect it up to the side A magnitude. We can then make this a new input in our output node and rename it A because that's going to go into our A joint rotation Y. So if I parent our joints together, C onto B and B onto A, and move the end point around, you can see that we have something that looks much like an IK solver. Notice though if I make the length C longer than can actually be solved, uh, then it will disappear. So there's room for some improvement in case we want to make this completely um, problem free. One thing we still need to do, and you'll notice that when I move the end point in the set axis or the y axis, then our IK solver does not actually follow or aim like we would expect it to. So we need to calculate the aim constraint as well. In order to create our aim vector, we again need to subtract the start point position from the end point position. We can either use the existing node or we can create a new one, just for clarity. We can then use the normal and tangent to orientation node that's built into Bifrost. To do this, we need to normalize the vector with the normalize node. Then we'll create the normal and tangent to orientation node and connect it up. The normalized vector then goes into the tangent input of the normal and tangent to orientation node. For the normal, we need to create one. So let's create a value node that we'll set to a 3 vector, with y being 1. We connect that up to the normal. One important thing to remember before we move on is on the normal and tangent to orientation node, uncheck the prioritize normal checkbox. Next, we need to convert the quaternion to Euler, so we'll use that exact node to do that. 
Then we need the degrees, so we'll convert the radians to degrees. We can then pipe this output through to our Bifrost graph node and connect that up to our aim group. I'll just rename the output to aim con or aim constraint. Now if I grab my aim group null and connect the aim con output of the Bifrost graph node up to the rotation values of this node, we should have an aim constraint on this particular null. Now if I parent my joints under this aim group null, I'll get the behavior that I'm expecting from a normal IK solver. One last thing we can do is use our up vector null for something. So let's make a new input called up point. This is going to be a matrix to scale translation and rotation node again. We'll replace the connection of the normal in the normals and tangents to orientation node with this one, the translation values. Now we need to connect the world matrix of my up locator or null to the input in the Bifrost node. And with that, I now have an up vector that I can control in the viewport. So you can see it rotates around itself, aiming at this one, while also aiming at our endpoint locator. And that's it. That's a very basic IK solver in Bifrost. Now, if you're interested, you can double click the, for instance, Quaternion to Euler, and you can also just go back. Now, all joke aside, you can double click them and you can enter to see how they're made up. For instance, if I double click this one and go in here, double click that, we can see, oh, okay, it's the dot product. So you can pull them apart and see how they work if, uh, if you really want to dive into how the math is done here. Oh, one last thing. Uh, I'll show you another neat little trick that could be really handy. You go in here and click create IK handling, then you select the first joint and the last joint, and there you go. Another way to create an IK solver handle thing. So that's it for this tutorial. If you want to watch more tutorials, go on to blobbyrb.com and have a look-see.